I want to talk to you about your shadow, your medical data shadow. It's something you probably never think about, but it follows you everywhere. It's intimately connected to you. It's the medical outline of your body. It's the sum total of all the health and medical information about you. It's measurements, it's diagnoses, it's treatments. It's all your personal health and medical data. You'd be amazed at what kind of adventures your medical data shadow is out there having. Your medical data shadow is a real benefit to you, but it's also a big problem. And I want to talk about that. Data-driven medicine is coming from an electronic patient record that follows you throughout your life to treatments tailored to your genome, from early indicators of health trends to massive follow-on drug studies, to AI and expert systems that can read test results and spot connections better than humans. There's new research, new techniques, and new capabilities, all powered by our medical data. Data-driven medicine feeds a machine. The machine uses complex computer algorithms and a world's worth of medical expertise. And the machine needs all of our data. But for this machine to work, we need to trust it. We need to, we need to trust it with our data. We need to trust its security and its privacy. We need to trust that it will only be used in our interest and with our permission. Right now, we don't trust it in that way, and there's no reason why we should. And I'm going to tell you how to change that. Today, the technologies that store and process your medical data are not controlled by either you or your doctor. They're owned by medical institutions as strategic corporate assets. They're owned by lots of third parties, all of whom buy and sell your data. In fact, you don't even own your data. You don't have a say in who gets to see it or use it. The medical data economy is largely invisible. This has to change. You, the patient, need to be at the center of your data. You need to be able to access your own health data wherever it exists. You need to be able to correct errors because no one cares more about the accuracy of your medical data than you. You need to be able to control who gets to see it and under what circumstances. How we got here is an interesting journey and one worth summarizing. Let's start at the beginning. For medicine to work, patients need to trust their doctors. We need to feel confident sharing the intimate details of our lives. Sexual activities, mental health, substance abuse, possibly illegal, conditions with a social stigma. Without trust, we can't talk about what's scary, deadly, or embarrassing. Historically, doctors recognized this. Privacy was the core of the ethical practice of medicine. For over 2,000 years, doctors swore the Hippocratic Oath, vowing to protect patient privacy. This idea of patient privacy carried forward through history. The American Medical Association Code of Ethics has similar language, and like many other professions that require intimacy and trust, doctors have a legal and moral responsibility to protect patient privacy. This worked so well for so long because data tended to stay with doctors. It was on paper, in files, in cabinets, in offices. But the modern medical industry is different. Your doctor doesn't hold your medical data. The institution she works at does. Additionally, your data is in millions of hidden databases, unknown and inaccessible to you. There are over 880,000 health data brokers and marketing companies that sell your health data to any willing buyer. Your medical data is collected, used, and sold in other hidden ways as well by 55,000 pharmacies, which are invariably part of large national chains, by 33 states who sell or give it away, by drug companies and other companies. Meanwhile, the internet has brought us the surveillance economy. Internet giants make their money primarily by spying on us and selling that data to others. This is Google, this is Facebook, this is everybody. And this includes medical data. 
Search engines keep records of what we're interested in. Health-related websites keep records of what pages we read. And social networking companies collect our health information, too, because that's where we talk about it. And modern medical devices run on data, from medical implants to health trackers like Fitbits. An enormous amount of data about us is generated constantly. And people don't own that data. Right now, there are pacemakers that won't give either their patients or doctors the complete data stream from the devices. And none of these companies are staffed by people who took the Hippocratic Oath. This data is used by companies without your best interest at heart. It's used to persuade us for advertising. It's used to judge us for employment and insurance. And it's used to exploit us to develop new profitable products and services and to keep costs high. And finally, this data, the medical shadows of millions of people, is regularly stolen by criminals. For things like identity theft and medical insurance fraud, and sometimes for embarrassment, harassment, and even extortion. Current privacy laws like HIPAA don't protect us. The privacy protections we have don't match the real-world privacy risks. HIPAA is basically a liability shield for healthcare companies. The laws don't work because they cover the healthcare system and not the data. And there's far more personal health data outside the medical system than inside it. Predictably, people are reacting accordingly. Many are afraid to share their intimate details with their doctors. And this causes them to withhold critical information or avoid treatment. The California Healthcare Foundation found that one in eight Americans have put their health at risk because of privacy concerns. They avoid seeing their regular doctors, they avoid tests, they even ask their doctors to alter a diagnosis. Other studies found that 586,000 Americans with cancer, 2 million Americans with mental illness, and 150,000 American soldiers with PTSD all did not seek treatment due to privacy concerns. All of this will break the valuable medical data machine, both for us individually and for us collectively as society. We want and deserve the benefits of all this medical data without risking our personal privacy and security. It would be better if we could control our own data and decide who gets to use it and under what circumstances. It would be better if we could support the doctor-patient relationship. And it would be better if we could enable medical data research. This is a hard task, but it's not impossible. We just need to turn the current way of thinking about medical data upside down. We need privacy rules that are patient-centric and not institution-centric. And I have five basic principles. One, accessibility and control. We need to be able to see and control our own medical data. And by this, I don't mean just participation or a view into what's happening, but actual power over our data. It's our shadow. We should control it. Two, transparency and accountability. We have a right to know who has our medical data and what they're doing with it. We have a right to see and understand the algorithms that make decisions using our data. Right now, these algorithms are locked away inside proprietary medical devices and proprietary computers. But it's not science if the algorithms can't be independently evaluated. Three, no use without authorization. Today, when you see your doctor, you sign a form consenting to their use of your data. But you probably didn't read it. And even if you did, you had no choice but to sign it. That's not authorization. That's coerced consent. We need to be able to give specific authorization. Who, what, and why. This puts the patient in control of his own data. I like the principle from the Society for Participatory Medicine. Nothing about me without me. And this needs to be true for all data, even anonymized data. Our medical data is highly personalized and individualized. And anonymization is hard. Many studies have demonstrated that anonymization techniques easily fail. Principle four, treat research and clinical uses the same. 
Right now, research is a dodge to get around a lot of privacy rules. Our data is our data regardless of how it's used. And finally, principle five, standardized privacy policies across the entire industry. It can't be one set of rules for hospitals, another for data brokers, another for health trackers, and yet another for medical websites. It doesn't make sense and it doesn't work. The privacy rules should follow the data wherever it goes. So those are the principles. The goal is to move medical records out of the large institutions and into patient control, and to protect that data wherever it is. Professions like law, medicine, and accounting are different from standard business relationships. These people can't help us unless we feel safe sharing intimate details with them. We expect these professionals to work on our behalf and in our best interests. That's why they're professions instead of jobs and regulated along those lines. That's what attorney-client privilege is all about. That's what the AMA Code of Ethics is all about. And that's what we've lost in the modern gold rush to monetize our personal medical data. In order to bring medicine into the technological age, we need to make the medical data network look more like the internet. Early networks are like the phone network. The central network was smart, and the end user devices were dumb. The fundamental insight of the internet is to switch that around. The network became dumb, and the devices became smart. And there are two ways to regulate either centrally inside the network or individually at the edges. The Hippocratic Oath is a moral regulation at the edges. It's about individual doctors and their patients. Modern medical privacy law tries to regulate in the center. It centralized rules about data privacy, and it's a bad idea that's not working. It's time to go back to regulating the edges. This means returning control to patients and their doctors. This means restoring that professional to individual relationship. Of course, there'll be challenges making this work. How the data flows, how we design the systems, how we make the user interface understandable. But the general idea, a single consolidated medical record that you have control over, but is instantly available worldwide to everyone who needs it, is exactly the sort of thing the internet does well. Think of any social network. But it's up to us. The only person with the clear ethical and legal rights to create a complete medical profile of you is you. You're the one who cares that your medical data shadow is complete and accurate. You need to be in control of it. Thank you.